Hey guys, welcome to the fifth lesson on fundamentals of C++ programming. Today we're going to be talking about arrays. Um, the reason why we're talking about arrays is because arrays is a fundamental concept to know as a programmer. Um, it, arrays are basically in all programming languages, and it's a, arrays are a way that we can hold lots of data um, in some kind of um, sequential way. Um, I'll talk about that more in a second. Um, however, if you are interested in this kind of stuff and are, in, are interested in learning all the ways at C++ we can hold lots of data, um, I would recommend looking at my video series on data structures using C++, and that basically involves, you know, how we hold data in, in all programming languages, really. That's just focusing on C++. Um, but... Inside of the STL, there are classes that are designed for us that we can use to hold lots of data. For example, a vector. A vector is basically a list. And it, behind the scenes, the backbone, I'm pretty sure, I know in C Sharp, we have a class called list, if you're from C Sharp. And the backbone of that is an array. Um, I'm pretty sure the backbone of a vector is an array also. So the, the, the understanding of an array is really understanding the backbone of lots of data structures or lots of ways of holding data in programming languages. There are other ways also, like having the backbone as a linked list, which we'll probably talk about in this video series also, because it's related to C++. So let's get started with what uh, what is an array. And the most basic way to look at an array is an array is just a collection of memory locations. Um, I just When I teach and talk about declaring variables in programming languages, I normally explain variables as creating a memory location. So for example, if I go int x equals 5, that this memory location I created in memory now, and I called it x. I attached a name x to it so that I can access the memory location. If I didn't do that, the only way I could access it is by its memory address. So I attach X to it so that I can access the memory location easier. Now, once I have this, now I can store data into this memory location. In this example, I'm holding an integer, so it has a, an upper bound and a lower bound of what data can be stored into this memory location. And I can change it over time, I can reassign it, I can, do, I can increment it, and I can do all different things, and we looked at this in previous lessons of what memory locations are. Now, an array, however, is basically the same as that concept, but we can store multiple, or we can create multiple memory locations to hold multiple types, I mean, multiple amounts of data. Now, one thing to note about arrays is arrays are one type of data. For example, if I create an integer array, I can only store integer values into this array. I cannot store uh, maybe strings. I can't store strings into an integer array. So because it's an integer array, I only have to store ints in it. So an array is one data type. Another cool thing about an array is that because of how we create arrays, we access the individual element. They're called elements or memory locations in the array by index or by a number. So each memory location has a number. The first location will be zero and then going to how big the array is. So if I access memory location 22, it goes to that slot and then changes the data. But at that slot, it's nothing more than just an integer like this. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So to create an array in C++, um, it is different than languages like C Sharp and Java, where arrays by um, default are reference types. Um, in C++, there's two ways that we can create arrays. In this lesson, we're only going to be looking at creating um, arrays statically. Or, um, yeah, we're, we're looking at that. So this way, we're not, act we're not allocating any memory on the heap, um, which we'll talk about eventually. There's a stack in a heap, memory, um, all that stuff. Yeah, so this way, we're not going to be allocating memory on the heap, meaning that once once the, we get out of the scope of whatever function that is whatever function created the array, the array disappears and it's deleted from memory. We don't have to worry about any cleanup here. 
Um, but once we start dynamically allocating arrays, we're, we're creating memory, we're allocating on other memory locations, not the stack. So when we do that, we'll have to worry about cleaning up our mess. And that's one thing that C++ has to do. Um, and we'll look at that over time. But there's our benefits of doing each. If I dynamically allocate array, I can set the size of array at runtime. I could decide if I really wanted to. And we'll look at that. And then the size of a dynamic array can change because I can keep on reallocating it. Like if I have an array of 10 slots and I want to grow it, I can grow it to 20 slots and do everything I need to do. Um, so we'll look at that. Like I said, also, if you're interested in that, I would look at my data structures series on C++ as well. So let's go ahead and dive into creating our first array. So the syntax is slightly different from languages like C Sharp and Java. In C++, it's whatever data is going to be stored in the array. So in this case, I'm going to be storing integer values. Then I'm going to create the array name. I'm going to say my array, and then you give it how many locations you want the array to have. So I'm saying that this array will have three memory locations or three integers. Now, this is almost the same thing as going like int x, int y, int z. This, I created three separate memory locations, and in this, I created three memory locations inside of an array. Now, you may be wondering, why would I ever want to create an array over just saying x, y, and z like this? And the reason, because the reason why I want to do that is, one, it's more compact, it's neater. And two, it has an index attached to it. And that index is really important for things that, for things that, um, or the index is important so that we can use that, that number to really make arrays powerful. And I know it probably sounds confusing, but basically, if because of the index, I can say, okay, and we'll do this. Let's say I'm making a program that allows people to enter some data, like three numbers, and I store that into an array. Well, let's say I want to add all those numbers together. I could just write a for loop that will iterate over the array, add them all up together because of that index. That index is very important to do stuff like that. You know, if I wanted to make a program that entered in 5,000 pieces of data or something like that, you know, creating all these variables and stuff is just impractical. Creating an array like this makes it a lot easier. So that is an array um, declaration. Now, how we access the elements of an array and assign values to them, we do that by access, accessing the, um, or by specifying the array name and then specifying the index. So I'm going to say my array sub, and then the first element, like I said, starts with zero. So once I do that, this is basically saying, okay, access the integer at that location then I can assign it a value if I want. So I'll say the first location holds the number 500. The second location holds the number 600. And the third location holds the number 700. So these three locations now hold these numbers. But the, the most important thing to remember here is each location is just an integer. This is an integer. It's just I'm accessing it through array syntax. So now that I have that, let's say I wanted to then display all the values into the console of my array. The easiest way to do this is to create a for loop, which you guys have seen. So I'm going to say for int i equals 0, as long as i is less than 3, i++. plus plus. So this is my counter control variable. It will, it will go up and increase by 1 for as long as it's less than 3. So then because I have that integer now, now I can just say C out my array sub i. And by doing that, as i increases, it accesses each element and prints the data. So the first time we enter the loop, i will be 0. So it's going to print 500 because it's accessing the 0 spot. So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. So as you can see, we see 500, 600, and 700 as we would expect. So that's creating a basic array and assigning values to it and then also displaying values from it. So let's go ahead and quickly look at other um, ways that we can initialize an array. So this is the first way we can do it. We can create the slots and then assign the data like that. Um, there are some other ways, however. 
I can create an array. Here, let's go. I can create an array using this kind of syntax. Say three slots, and then say equals one, two, three. So with this syntax, I'm saying create an array with three slots, and then assign the first slot the value one, the second slot the value two, and the third slot the value three. So that's one way I can do it. Or I could also do it like that, but I can omit the number there. So I don't have to actually specify it there because it can see that I if it five numbers, so it will do five, um, five slots in my array by default. So those are two other ways of initializing an array. So that's the basic idea about an array. Um, so let's go ahead and create a basic program just so we can see an, some kind of example with this. Um, and then that will be it for this video. This is pretty basic. So I want to create a program that allows, let's say, we're creating a management program for some kind of teacher. And this management program will allow the teacher to enter in the grades uh, or the final grades of his, uh, let's say, 10 class of students. So he has 10 students in his class and it will allow him to enter in 10 grades. And then the program will calculate the average of it and then print the average. So this is some kind of realistic program that we can create. So the first thing we need to do is um, we need to um, create an array of a, a specific amount. We're going to say that this class has 10 students. And we have to specify this at first because um, we can only create um, an array that has a value of a constant amount. Um, or, I mean, we only can create a constant amount of elements in an array. So we can't say, okay, this array is equal to um, this variable, and then they type in the amount of students into that variable, and then it creates the array based on that. We cannot do that. However, we can do that with dynamic arrays, not static arrays. So we're just going to create an array called students. And we're just going to say he has, or the teacher has, 10 students. Then when we had that, we're going to create a loop for 10. And every time, we're going to enter, ask the person to enter in, in grade for this student. So, so for student, and then I'll concatenate and add in I plus 1. And L. So this will ask, and uh, actually, let's do, let's add a colon. I don't need that. Okay. So we enter, it asks to enter in the grade for this student. And then we'll say C in student sub I. So as they enter in every grade, it dumps that what value or whatever they entered in into the slot in the array for that student. So at the end of this for loop, I should have all the values for my students. Then I'm going to add them all up and calculate, calculate the average. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to create a variable to hold my counter of all the things added together. So I'm going to say double count equals zero. Then I'm going to create a for loop, basically the same for loop as above. That's going to iterate over my array and add all up the numbers again, or add them all to count. So I'm going to say count plus equal students sub i. So then we have them all added together. Then I want to create a variable and say double do you, average equals count divided by 10. And then see out um, the average of the class is, and then average. Okay, I can't type. And okay, so this is pretty basic. I'm just creating a variable to add everything together. So I'm iterating over my array every single time. I'm plugging in i to access that element. I get that value and add it to this variable called count. 
Once I'm done adding them all up, I divide them by the amount of students we have, which is this is just a formula for calculating average. And then once I have that, I display it like that. So let's go ahead and test this program. So enter graded for student one. Student one got 98. Two got an 85. 96. 100. 67. 77. 87. 89 and another 100. So once I hit this, I should know the last one, and I'll give them another 65. I hit enter, and now the cl the average of the class is an 86.4. That's the average of my class. This Make sure that this is working by typing in, let's say, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5. I think I messed up. And the average of the class is five. So the average formula is working fine. So this is a basic example that's showing you how we can utilize arrays to create this kind of example. If we didn't have arrays, this would be a completely different program. Um, you know, if we didn't have arrays to create this, um, we would have to create individual integers. And then we would have to, as the user enter in, we have to keep some kind of count of what variable we're up to. As it gets added up, we need to um, do some kind of, I don't know, if statement logic to see what variables to assign. Uh, there's a lot of ways you could do it, but it would be a pain. Using arrays makes it a lot simpler. We can just dump data into an array, add the data up, calculate the average and we're on our way all right so that's it for this video um, the reason why it's, it's so short is because I mean the concept of array is not that hard it's just a lot, many memory locations put together into one name and then we access the individual integers or whatever type is the array by the index um, now, when we like I said, when we when we look at dynamic allocation of arrays, that will be a little bit longer because we'll be discussing allocating memory, cleaning up memory, uh, and things like that. And we'll actually be able to build the same exact program that way. Um, dynamic arrays use pointers to in order to work. So we'll have to look at that um, in a later lessons when we when we get to pointers. Um, I'm pretty sure the next topic that we'll look at is we already did the if statement well I'm pretty sure we'll we'll start looking at functions defining functions and creating classes or no a function let's see let's see what the book does hold on functions we did loops then it does before classes yeah I think before so we'll look at functions and then pointers I think which I'll, I don't know, I'll have to double check this all. I'm just quickly looking through the chapters. Yeah, I think functions and pointers. And when we talk about pointers, we'll talk about this again. So that's it for this video. If you liked it, be sure to give me a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, leave comments and uh, leave some comments below, and I will answer them if you need any help with arrays or C++ in general and if you yeah um yeah that's about it so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time